Hi everyone, welcome. This is Rachel Georges, the artist behind Gorgeous Mixed Media. So today I'm just sharing a, an acrylic pearl petal pour and uh, I'm painting the edges like I normally do. I've taped the back and I've already stretched out this canvas to tighten it. And so I'm laying down just a plain white base coat and I'll stick all of my paint recipes down in the description. Um, but I also wanted to talk about, you know, kind of how I got into fluid art. You know, I've discussed it a little bit in, I think, some of my early videos. Uh, but I feel like it's important to, you know, share my experience and kind of what, what's led me to this point. Uh, so I initially, you know, I've been painting since, since I was a teenager, uh, more traditional abstract art painting. And... I stumbled across this video with Emma Lindstrom and she was doing this huge fluid art piece and um, creating these really cool cells and just the way the paint moved and the things that she created really inspired me to learn everything I could honestly about you know fluid art and fluid painting. Um, so thus started my journey trying to figure this medium out. I also started following uh, Melly D and she's a phenomenal artist. She is the first one that I know of that really started adding um, enamels to her paints to get those cool looking cells. Um, and then I, you know, I tried... <laughs> I tried to follow along. She only had a handful of videos at that time, and I think she was also still figuring things out herself and uh, how she was getting the reaction she did. And I just, at first, I just couldn't get it, and I wasn't having much success. So I got a little bit sidetracked. I started following um, Anne Marie, and I was doing, you know, the flip cups and the dirty cups with silicone, and I did that for a long time. Um, I was never very satisfied with that technique because I felt like, you know, you, you threw the paint on the canvas and you kind of got what you got. And I, that's not to say that it's not a beautiful technique. You, I mean, you can certainly get some awesome results that way too. Um, I just, myself, I didn't enjoy the process of it as much. Um, so off and on, I kind of took some breaks with fluid art life happened um, and then once again I, I came across um, Sarah Mack actually she was making these beautiful galaxy pores with um, no silicone she was just using again the deco art and uh, getting these amazing cells with her straight pores um, so that kind of reignited my interest and I started um, looking up Melly D again and, and seeing what videos she had because she had a lot of videos that I hadn't watched and um, then I stumbled across Sarah Taylor and of course as you know she's really kind of brought this style of painting back to you know the forefront her and uh, Dwight with Dwight Pores, you know, they did a lot of experimentation. And um, so that's really where this pearl puddle pour style comes from. Um, you know, the, the paint recipes that I use are very similar to, to Sarah Taylor's paint recipes. I've just made some really minor tweaks here and there. And it, it also varies from painting to painting. It just depends you know, if I'm wanting bigger cells or smaller cells, if I want something a little more subtle. Um, so I do kind of switch my recipes up depending on, you know, what I'm doing. Um, but I feel like it's incredibly important to recognize those people that have come before me that I've learned from because every, most everything that you see on this canvas, you know, I've learned from watching other fluid artists and, um, so with that, 
I will say, you know, here in this painting, I'm really playing around a lot with the primary elements, plumeria, probably more so than I have in other paintings so far. Um, and again, just I'll list all the recipes down in the description, but in this particular uh, mix for the plumeria, I do use their vivid enamel that they send whenever you purchase their primary elements. They, at least when I did, um, I think Anne Marie was the first person I saw using primary elements and they were so beautiful. I, I got a whole set and it came with this bottle of vivid enamel that you can use to mix the pigments up into paint. So I realized when I mix that with, you know, Floetrol, it creates kind of this, well, it's really similar to the cloud effect that I've seen in some of Sarah's videos. Um, I'd say the, the kind of cool thing about this is when you lay it over some of your puddle paints, it actually pushes those paints back to the surface and kind of makes them mix and blend together. Um, so I just feel like it's a really pretty effect. Um, I can't really say what prompted me to start throwing alcohol inks in my paint. Um, just one day I was, I was doing more of a traditional fluid art piece with no, no cells, just messing around with high flow paints. And then I decided to see what would happen if I dropped alcohol inks in my paint. And, um, I thought it was really interesting how the alcohol inks kind of spread to a point and then stopped and then also stayed on the surface of that paint, giving it a really cool texture. Um, and it's just, it's just a look that I like. And so you see a lot of metallic alcohol inks in most of my paintings now. Um, and then additionally, I also like kind of playing with the high flow acrylics. I've done some pieces where I just kind of drop a bunch of high flow acrylics on top and, you know, spritz them with water and let them kind of run and do what they're going to do and try to shape them into some sort of composition that I like. Um, and I'll probably try to do another one of those really soon but um, yeah I just I'm still kind of exploring and experimenting and you know this is a medium that has endless potential and endless possibilities and you know it, it excites me and I just I find a lot of peace from you know working with the paints and trying to strike a balance with them um, on this particular one, I did a sister painting uh, off camera, uh, so you don't get to see any of the actual pour part, but you will see the finished results at the end. I'll, I'll share that painting with you as well at the very end. On this piece, I did spend a lot of time, you know, embellishing it and uh, doing brushwork and cleaning up some lines and just kind of embellishing and adding some more interest to the painting. Uh, for me, sometimes it's hard to know when to stop. You know, when am I done? Um, and, and still to this day, sometimes I don't know if I'm done yet. And usually it's just a matter of I step away and I start working on something else and then I come back and look at it and then I'm like, yeah, I'm satisfied with that. I think I'm done. Um, and I, I'm assuming that's just something that will come with time getting more uh, accustomed to knowing when your painting is finished. Um, I've certainly done some paintings where I'd wish I had stopped, you know, 30 minutes before, an hour before. Um, but with that, you know, I hope, uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Um, if you like my content, be sure to give me a follow, subscribe, um, and let me know if you have any questions. I would be more than happy to answer those in the comments. Uh, thanks so much for joining and have a great day.
Drove down to a bed 